First story. Secret Voices Note. The post might sound repetitive due to op posting on different subreddits. I have left it as it is because of the small details she included in the posts. The saga of OP's cheating father's entitled affair daughter, whom father raised to replace OP, left her mentally disturbed before abandoning her too, dumping her on OP. Now half-sister is ruining OP's marriage, claiming OP's baby as hers, killing her pets, ruining her house until she finally had it and kicked the sister out of the house. I just want to give a disclaimer that I know how absolutely horrible this is about to sound. I feel so guilty for feeling this way, and my whole family is in therapy trying to cope, both individually and as a group. I just wanted to get this off my chest and see if anyone else has been in my shoes before. It's the toughest thing I never expected to experience. My alcoholic father left my mother and me when I was a toddler his first marriage and child. He remarried almost immediately and eventually had a child eight years younger than me, another daughter. Not only did he plan for her to be born on my birthday, he tried to name her after me as well. She's 16 now and frequently recounts disturbing stories of being raised to be just like me being told she can or can't do things that I would or wouldn't do. For example, by all accounts, she was born and raised to replace me and recreate the original family that he destroyed. Understandably, she absolutely hates me today and resents me for all of it, whether she's always conscious of those feelings or not. It's clear as day. My sister and I were not raised around each other. I saw her maybe twice a year for the first 15 years of her life. We texted occasionally as she got older, but I will admit to not knowing her from a stranger on the street. Cut to last year, when her mother went completely off the deep end mentally, our father left, and my sister begged my husband and I to take custody of her. We did, and she has lived with us for a year, with no attempt from either parent to fight for her. Our father hasn't seen her in ten months because he refuses, and her mother moved four states away without telling us and never looked back. They basically dumped her on me and ran. This is the first time I'm saying this, and I feel awful for it. But this kid is a nightmare. She has no concept of empathy or a single regard for anyone other than herself. She doesn't appear to have any genuine emotion. She's manipulative, attention-seeking, and selfish. Our therapists suspect she has BPD. But obviously she's too young to be diagnosed. I was asked to have regular meetings with her therapist to share my perspective on day-to-day -day life, because she's a pathological liar and the therapist is concerned that she can't help her if she doesn't know the truth about anything. Since the day she moved in, we have had nothing but problems. My husband and I nearly divorced last year due to the stress. She was never taught basic hygiene, and I'm now in debt over her dental bills because her teeth are rotting out of her mouth. I'm ripping my hair out trying to get her to shower regularly, which apparently she's never done in her life. This is such a problem that my furniture and car now smell like her unwashed body all the time. If she does shower, she floods the bathroom until the ceiling underneath breaks because she doesn't understand shower curtains. I have no evidence of her actually using shower products, despite having a closet full of them at her disposal. I could go on and on. But the new issue is that now I'm pregnant with my first child, and she's escalating. I feel like I can't enjoy this time because of it. I couldn't even get through my first ultrasound without her texting me and demanding I take her to a friend's house immediately. She's constantly belittling me for not feeling well or sending my husband to pick her up from outings so I can sleep. She's clearly extremely jealous already, and it's only getting worse. All of this to say, I hate my father. He's ruined every good thing in my life. But this is just unimaginable. His horrible excuse for parenting is now consuming every aspect of my life. He raised a child without any sense of how to function, and now it's my problem to deal with. I want out, but there isn't a way. I feel horrible for my husband, who shouldn't have to deal with any of this. I don't understand how my sister was supposed to have a normal life when she was raised like this. I don't know how I'm supposed to have a normal life in the midst of all of this. I'm exhausted. Update an RBPD family. Can someone tell me I'm not crazy? I'm raising my younger sister, who multiple therapists have told me likely has BPD. We're holding off on any diagnosis because she's still a teenager. And there's a small possibility, it's just hormones and trauma. I've read book after book, and I'm positive she's borderline. She has me so convinced that my perception of reality is wrong and that I'm making things up. I'm just going to leave a list. If anyone could just confirm that they've experienced any of this too, I'd really appreciate it. I think I'm going crazy. She adamantly denies being told to do XYZ, and will argue that I never said it to her. Even if my husband was standing right there and insists he heard me, she won't back down. I didn't say it. She doesn't know what I'm talking about. I'm making things up. 
She's an absolute angel out of the house. She gets praise from everyone she meets. And no one believes us if we try to vent about her. She ignores responsibility until there's a consequence. And then we'll cry and say she's going to tell her therapist about us for making her unhappy. She only has transactional relationships. The other party has to like her more than she likes them, or offer her something like a car to drive her around. And once that ends, she becomes cold and selfish until they cut her off. She does not bathe, or brush her teeth, or clean her clothes. But she's always dressed nicely, wearing perfume, and having her hair done for the whole nine yards. When I say that my furniture reeks from her body, I'm not joking. She's been caught texting me what I want to hear to avoid consequences, while simultaneously on the phone with her boyfriend, talking about what a ridiculous bee I am. She's always had a fascination for my partners, to the point of impersonating me on social media and contacting my high school boyfriend's family. She's now latched onto my husband and only behaves if he's around. She has the same attachment to my friends and seems to think they're hers, despite an 8 to 15 year age gap. She's been caught many times making up stories about my husband and me, to the point of real concern from our therapist about how far she'll go with the lies. Speaking of the lies, Every time she opens her mouth, she's not telling the truth. I could ask her what color grass is, and she'd say blue. Not only does she lie, she pegs her actions on me. Anytime she's confronted with a wrongdoing, she will try to say it was me. Nothing is her fault. This almost caused my husband and I to divorce, because she triangulated us and convinced us the other was the problem for months when it was hers. She initiates fights between me and other people. She'll repeatedly tell me any negative thing any other person has ever said and try to convince me to confront them. Half the things she's told me aren't true, and this also contributed to my near divorce. The world revolves around her. I couldn't even get through my first ultrasound appointment without her texting me with demands to take her place. She takes my belongings, and then insists I told her she could have them. Everything from my hairbrush to my underwear. She has a victim complex like I have never seen. You'd think we killed her when she got grounded for violating a boundary four times in a row. There is no thought in her head for anyone but herself. It's her wants and her demands constantly, and she doesn't care who it affects. She's entitled to everything. She's angry with me because I won't give her the brand new car I just bought myself. She doesn't pack for vacations because she assumes she can have whatever I bring, and then is angry when I say no. She's mad when my husband and I spend time alone together. Everything is perceived as a slight. Am I crazy here? Ida, how did I forget about the animals? She's neglectful to the point of being abusive toward animals. She came to us with a pet bunny that she insisted needed to move in with her. She loved it too much to leave it behind, despite my husband being deathly allergic. Once the bunny was in our home, she put it in her closet for days because it smells. When I realized she had a living animal in a closet, we moved it downstairs, where she left it alone in the dark until it became so anxious that it got sick. If I didn't check on it and make sure it was fed, I think it might have died. We rehomed after a month, and I don't think I've seen her care less about anything. I asked her about this later, and she said, verbatim, that bunny and I didn't have a connection. It tried to bite me one time, and I hated it. Now she consistently forgets we have a dog, and will ignore it for 8-10 hours if she's home alone until it's torn up furniture and had multiple accidents. If I don't remind her that there's a living animal in the house that needs care, she'll absolutely ignore it, although even with the reminders, it's hard to get her to care at all about the dog. Update. Please read through my original post for background. The short version is that I've been forced to raise my teenage sibling, who is incompetent on almost every level due to my alcoholic father's horrible excuse for parenting, and it's taking a tremendous toll on every part of my life. I just want to know if I'm overreacting to this specific situation. I'm horrified, defeated, and almost betrayed at how little trust I can have in this kid. When she first moved in with us, she had a pet rabbit. It is worth noting that my husband is incredibly allergic to rodents of any kind, and I am terrified of them. We never intended to take the rabbit, but she cried and pleaded that it would die if we left it in the care of anyone else, so we went against our lease and brought it into our home. Within 12 hours, my husband couldn't breathe correctly and had to begin using his inhaler for the first time in years. She was thrilled to have her pet back for about a day and a half. Three days in, I realized she had put it in her closet and freaked out because you cannot put an animal in a closet. At which point she said it was too gross to have in her bedroom, so we moved it to our finished basement, where she swore to spend time and take care of it. Again, my husband is so allergic that he is now unable to go into the basement of our home, 
and I am scared to death of the poor thing. So while we checked in daily with her about rabbit care, and she swore she was following through, I'll admit I didn't check as thoroughly as I should have. I know nothing about rabbits, so I was only checking to see if food and water were clean and available. Within four weeks, this bunny was on the brink of death. We think of the stress of her leaving it alone constantly and lying about spending time with it. I sobbed when we realized how sick it was, but she was stone-faced. You'd think she just learned about the weather. She didn't care in the slightest. I think she said, Oh, that sucks, when we realized it might not survive. Thank God we found a family friend to take it in, and the bunny is thriving at its new home. But she was equally unfazed by having to rehome it. I'm still sick to my stomach over the situation and her reaction to it. I still feel so guilty, like it's my fault. A few months later, we realized she was neglecting our dog. Lying about having fed her, refusing to refill her water, and ignoring her entirely. It got to the point that we couldn't leave her alone with the dog for any length of time, because she just wouldn't let her out to use the bathroom for hours on end. Our dog is very well trained, and will ring a bell to go outside. And she was even blatantly ignoring that. Eventually, we had cameras installed in our home, and caught her on the phone telling a friend that she doesn't want to take care of the dog. So she just doesn't do it. Her excuse every time she's confronted is that she forgot we had a dog. It's a 90-pound German Shepherd. She regularly forgets it exists. What? Most recently, and the one that has me just gutted, is what she did to our cat. I'll admit that the cat is my favorite pet because it's my cat. I've had her for years. She's the first pet I ever owned, and I'm very bonded to her. I'm also six months pregnant, so I'm unable to change her litter anymore. We moved the litter box into the hallway bathroom that only my sister uses out of caution, so that I'm not around it much at all. My husband usually changes the litter, but he was away for the day, so I asked my sister to do it. I could hear her on the phone while she was doing it, but it was done, so I didn't think much of it. The following afternoon, about 36 hours later, I peeked into the bathroom. She put the lid back on the litter box so that the opening was facing the wall, and the cat couldn't possibly have had access to it. There was zero evidence of an accident outside of the box, which means that for 36 hours, my cat was unable to use the bathroom. Thank God she is okay. But this very easily could have turned into a kidney infection or a UD. Otherwise, it would have made her very sick. I'm beside myself. I cried for hours. I feel so guilty that my animals have been neglected because I trusted her with the simplest task. Again, she's unbothered. There's no remorse. I can't bring myself to even look at my sister anymore. I can't fathom the thoughtlessness and lack of care. I can't believe I allowed it to happen so many times. I feel so guilty and responsible, but also disgusted, that I can't even be pregnant and rely on her to put a lid on a box correctly or open a door for my dog. Am I overreacting? Is this beyond normal teenage laziness? I'm at such a loss. I can't stress enough how much she does not care. It's like nothing I've ever seen before. I don't think she feels empathy at all. Update on our foster parents. Completely burned out with no support. My post history should have many of the details. But here's the gist. I'm technically not a foster parent because we stepped in and took custody of my teenage half-sibling before the state or CPS did. My husband and I were granted legal custody through the court system, and both of her parents lost their rights. This left us with no support in any form. I can't even get the county to take my calls. Anyone I contact says that we stepped in too soon and should have allowed her to go into the system because then we'd be entitled to the kinship foster supports that we can't access now. I had no idea what I was doing when this all began. It was an emergency situation, and we had to act quickly. But as it turns out, it was too quickly. On top of this, our family has completely abandoned us because I took someone's child away, and not a single family member has contacted us in a positive manner since. It's been almost two years of putting out fires every single day with this kid. I wish I were exaggerating. Within the first two months, my previously amazing marriage was nearing divorce from the stress. We quickly figured out through couples therapy that she was lying about almost everything she ever said or did, pitting us against each other, etc. This became the first of three therapists to suggest that she probably has some kind of personality disorder, likely borderline. Thankfully, my marriage has recovered, and we're now in an amazing place and expecting our first child in a few months. But that's where the good news ends. Off the top of my head, since she got here. She nearly killed her pet rabbit after telling me she neglected it on purpose. She used her bedroom furniture as a trash can for food and menstrual products. She has stolen everything from my husband's money to my underwear. We caught her telling a friend that she lies about taking care of our dog when we're not home. 
She nearly gave our cat a kidney infection from putting the lid on the litter box incorrectly and preventing its use. She made up so many stories about my husband that our therapist suggested cameras in our home for accountability. Refused to use soap in the shower to the point that our cars and couches reek from her body. Accuses us of making her depressed every time she receives a consequence. Caused mice to infest our rental home from the amount of trash she was hiding in her bedroom, etc. She is in therapy. And the therapist has nothing but praise to share. She behaves so differently in front of others than she does with us that it's like discussing different people. I'm convinced that I'm either going crazy or that I'm the problem. I could go on. But this post would take hours to read. It comes down to this. We're done. Neither of us have anything left to give. We've tried everything every therapy combination. Every parenting and guidance technique. We've read every book. And we've reached out for every support we can find. We've reached the point where neither of us want to come home after work and be in the house with her. There is so much hurt, resentment, and, frankly, anger. I checked out many months ago and can't even muster the energy to make small talk with her anymore. My husband recently had a breakdown and reached the same point. My concern is our health now. I am pregnant and very aware of how this kind of stress is impacting the baby. I'm scared to death to bring my child home to this environment and raise him in it. The thought of leaving her home for any length of time so I can give birth makes me afraid for my pets. My husband is waiting for a psych evaluation to begin medication for the first time in his life after having a series of stress-related health issues since she moved in he was in the emergency room this week for it. And his doctors are very concerned. I'm not even sure what I'm asking for with this post. Are there resources I haven't found yet? Is there a solution I'm not seeing? We've looked into the legal aspect here, and we're liable for things like child abandonment. If we try to find her other living arrangements, even with her parents, if anyone has anything even remotely helpful to share, I'm all ears at this point. Update on RBPD family. My BPD sister thinks my baby is hers. There's a ton more details in my post history. But I'd love some advice here regarding keeping my baby and my sister separate in her mind. I have had custody of my sister 16 years old for the last two years. She is strongly suspected of having BPD. But of course she is still young and we don't want to push a diagnosis on her at this point. The advice from multiple therapists has been to operate as if she's a confirmed borderline until she's older and receives the formal diagnosis. I've had an issue with her enmeshing herself with me for as long as I can remember, to the point of trying to be me at times. Absolutely everything that's mine, she thinks is hers. I'm talking about everything from my underwear to my bath towels to my car. She doesn't even have a license to my romantic partners. She's gone so far as to pretend to be me on social media to put herself between myself and my husband, to play a very large role in separating me from the rest of my family, etc. It's been very concerning for a very long time. The reason I have custody of her is because I moved into a new home with my husband, and upon visiting once, she decided that she should have these things too. We've since realized that the details of her parents' neglect were either heavily exaggerated or outright made up to gain our sympathy. It's a very long story with many more details, but that's the basis of where we're at here. I'm now due with my first baby on my sister's birthday in a couple of weeks. Terrible planning on our part, I know. I'm afraid that if I have this child on her birthday, she's either going to think we replaced her, or think she has some weird claim to my baby. And either way, what a nightmare. We've explained to her multiple times that she will not be babysitting or otherwise left alone with the baby for any reason due to her behavior the last few years, and our complete lack of trust in her. I am not even comfortable allowing her to wash bottles the dishes are her chore. There's the very big piece of not trusting her at all, but also the reality that this isn't her child or her responsibility, so she shouldn't and won't be expected to care for it, as if it were. All in all, we've tried to make it very clear that this is not her baby. She will not be caring for my baby, and the dynamic will be that she also lives in my house, where I am bringing home and raising my child. We quickly stopped referring to the baby as her nephew or her, anything after she immediately latched onto the idea but the baby would somehow be hers, she offhandedly told me to get a second bassinet, so he can sleep in her room multiple times. She's made many comments about what she will do with a baby at night. She's gotten offended at my plan to keep him in our bedroom with me while I'm recovering. She behaved at my baby shower as though it were for her, etc. Is there anything else I can do to lessen the inevitable SHT storm of bringing this baby home? Or has anyone else been in a similar situation, and had any sort of strategy work or not work? Update on our parenting. She won't stop treating my home like a dumpster. Update. I was hoping for more time to gather myself, but she initiated a conversation with me regarding the state of her room and what we had found. 
I very calmly let her know that our decision is going to be to ask her to leave our home after her 18th birthday or high school graduation, they're around the same time, and she should be making arrangements in the meantime. I expressed most of what I shared here. That we are at a total loss, have exhausted all options and resources, and have essentially had to admit that she needs more than we can provide. Having her in our home isn't ideal for anyone, and it simply can't continue beyond the given time frame. She was completely deadpan the entire conversation, made no comments other than to try to lie about things I have concrete proof of, and generally behaved as if we were discussing the weather. I assured her that any needs she makes me aware of will still be met. The consequences I shared in this post will be implemented, and we will all do our best to coexist for the remainder of her time here. But I said in no uncertain terms that it will be coming to an end. This may be above Reddit's pay grade, but I genuinely have no other resources that I haven't already exhausted to no avail. I'll try to keep this short, but I could go on for hours. My husband and I 25F have had legal guardianship of my sibling 17F for two years now. I'll be the first to admit that I have no idea what I'm doing here. The situation was initially emergency custody due to her parents' negligence, but it became permanent when the court deemed she couldn't be returned to either of them. She is not a foster child because I stepped in before the state took her away, meaning we are not eligible for any sort of service or benefit. The county won't even give me advice over the phone. I was navigating my new marriage one day as a 22-year-old, and the next I had a full-blown teenager living in my house with no warning. She and I are half-siblings and were not raised together. I barely knew her before she moved into my house. To say it's been a nightmare wouldn't scratch the surface. The details are in my post history if you want to go down that rabbit hole, but be warned, it's bad. To keep it to this specific situation, I cannot get her to stop treating my home and my furniture like her own personal dumpster. Within the first six months, I went into her room to attempt to gather her laundry. She does it herself. But I was home from work and thought it would be helpful and found that she'd been using her nightstand as a trash can drawers full of everything from food, trash, menstrual products, etc. It's worth noting that all of her bedroom furniture is the furniture I bought for myself when I first moved out literally the first items I ever truly owned. I reamed into her for this behavior, gave the consequence of removing the side table from her room, and for several weeks afterward, implemented random room checks until I thought she had learned her lesson. Clearly, I am incredibly naive and easy to fool because she has evidently not stopped this behavior and has only gotten better at hiding it. When we moved out of that home, I discovered that she had caused mice to infest her bedroom, and only her bedroom. There was no evidence of them anywhere else in the house, but her floors were corroded with droppings. I was, and eh, horrified. Late last year, we bought our first home together. New build, never lived in before, the dream home we have worked out whole lives for. She has her own large room and bathroom, and frankly, it's gorgeous. We decorated and made it a teen girl's paradise the whole nine. I explained to her that this could be a new start, that I expected her to treat my brand new home with respect, and that I expected her behavior would not carry over to this house. I reiterated my policy of giving her her own space and privacy, and told her that we were trusting her not to take advantage of that. Again, I am obviously an idiot. This weekend we discovered several bags think canvas tote bags, beach bags, drawstring bags in her closet filled with trash, Food orange peels so old they were rock solid, for example, and dirty dishes. We found these same things in every single dresser drawer, hidden under and inside all of her clothes. I had to leave the room to be physically sick at one point. Some of the trash was shoved under the furniture, which sits directly next to her bedroom trash can, which was unused. We have three kitchen trash cans, two large outdoor ones, etc. There is no shortage of receptacles for her to use. I cannot think of any earthly reason why she's outright refusing to use a trash can. There's no reason to be hiding the food she eats, or the dishes she uses we literally do not care what she eats. She knows this, and yet still, for some reason, she's either going to these lengths to hide evidence, or she's truly just refusing to use a trash can. This brings me to my next issue. I recently had my first child, and his nursery shares a wall with her bedroom. I am terrified that if she causes any sort of infestation, it will spill over into my infant's bedroom. This could very well impact the safety and cleanliness of a three-month-old child's nursery. I know this will come up. Yes, she has been in therapy weekly since she moved in. No, we don't have a formal diagnosis because no therapist wants to slap a label on someone her age. No, she does not respond to any consequence at all, including losing privileges like her phone. When I say I have tried everything short of kicking her out, which I learned that I legally can't do anyway, I do mean everything. 
She is suspected to have some kind of personality disorder, likely borderline, and her therapist has thrown around the idea of sociopathy as well. Trying to talk to, discipline, or reprimand her is like talking to a wall. I feel like the natural consequence of treating her furniture this way is that she doesn't get to keep it. Do I remove her dresser, nightstand, and closet door? Do I give her clear bins to use to hold her things? Do I start doing random room inspections? Is that all an overreaction? I don't know. My husband is very worried about property damage, bugs, and rodents let me reiterate. Brand new home. Brand. New. I lived here for less than a year. I'm worried about the impact this could have on my infant. This is clearly a mental health issue. But she has been known to lie to her therapist, which makes therapy ineffective. I've given her every resource I can find, but I can't make her utilize them correctly. I've never been at such a loss for anything in my life. Please, older parents with any concept of what they're doing, tell me what to do here. Update on our foster parents. Is it horrible to give up? Kinship situation. I'm just looking for reassurance that I'm not the world's worst human being here. I've posted a few times, and the whole story is in my post history. If this is the first post you're reading from me, to keep it brief, I-25F was backed into taking guardianship of my sister 15F at the time, and it turned into permanent custody two years ago. I was newly married, just turned 23, and my husband had just gotten discharged from the military and was transitioning back home. Literally overnight, with no warning, I had a teenager. She and I were not raised together and were basically strangers. Because she was never in the system, we are not eligible for the usual foster care supports. I'm basically on an island by myself over here. Since she moved in, she severely neglected every pet in my house, including her own rabbit, that she came with she nearly killed it and admitted to neglecting it because she didn't like it anymore. She's apparently a compulsive liar and rarely tells the truth. She's triangulated and manipulated both my husband and me to the point that we nearly divorced. She's been caught multiple times using her bedroom furniture as a trash can as well as hiding dirty dishes in her clothes drawers. She refuses basic hygiene to the point that our cars reek from her body, and her dentist is angry at the state of her teeth. She caused mice to infest our previous home due to how filthy her bedroom was. It's been suggested by multiple therapists that she has some kind of personality disorder and may also be dealing with some sociopathy. I'm sure I'm forgetting things because I'm a little frazzled writing this. She's 17 and a senior in high school now. She's been in therapy since she set foot in my house and has made little to no progress because she lies to the therapist I am in contact with her and confirm this regularly. We've spoken to three different therapists who all suggested that having her in our home is not the best situation for anyone. We're not equipped to deal with her and she isn't receptive to any help we actually can provide. All in all, the gist is that we FD up by stepping in when we did and a qualified foster family would have been the better option. The current situation is that I recently had my first child, who is now a few months old, and my sister has made absolutely zero progress since she got here two years ago. If anything, the hygiene, cleanliness, and lying are just getting worse. I'm afraid to raise my baby in a home that could become infested with bugs or animals and be unsafe for him. I feel so guilty that his home is often tense and hostile, and his mom and dad are stressed out and anxious. He didn't ask for this. He's just a baby. I had a nervous breakdown recently and told my husband that I feel guilty for having my own child while she's still in my house because he deserves better than this environment. After things hit the fan a few weeks ago and we discovered the uncleanliness in her room to be at such a level that I was physically sick, I told her she had to go. I agreed to see things through until she graduates high school next spring, but I gave her the deadline of seven days after graduation to move out. She has about ten months to prepare. I also said that if she causes my home to be unsafe or unclean for my infant, that is, she causes another infestation, I'll be having her removed by whatever means necessary, whether that's sending her back to her parents or giving up my legal rights. And I feel like SHT about it. I feel like I failed her, even though it was never my responsibility to do any of this. I feel like a horrible sister for not adjusting to all of this better than I did and not handling it better. I'm worried I'll make a terrible mother to my own son if I fail so badly with her. I'm even more worried that I'll be a great mother to him, and that will mean that I really failed her. I also feel so guilty for how badly I want her out of my house and out of my daily life so that I can focus on restoring everything that's been destroyed these last few years. I'm worried about what she'll tell other people and how evil I must seem to take her in just to make her leave. I don't know. We tried. We literally sacrificed everything and almost lost everything to help her. I never asked for this and never agreed to it either. I was backed into a corner 
and didn't know how to say no. The ship is sinking fast, and I'm allowed to make sure myself and my family aren't on it with her anymore, right? Second story. My entitled sister demanded that I be a surrogate for her, then booked a doctor's appointment behind my back, and tried to kidnap me with our mom's support so I couldn't run away. That's how she became estranged from the whole family, and was uninvited from my wedding. I 37F and my fiancé 37M are trying for another baby. I normally share everything with my family about my life, as I don't like holding on to secrets from my family. The other month, my sister spoke to me and mentioned how it was so nice that no one in our family was trying or pregnant. As every time someone said they were either one of those, she felt deflated because she doesn't have children. And then she proceeded to tell me why she couldn't have children, which she has told me repeatedly since finding out she can't have children. Then she asked the question that I knew she was going to ask me. She asked if maybe I could possibly help her and be a surrogate for her, as I have completed my family. My children are from a previous relationship, and my fiancé has always dreamed of having a child, even though he counts my two children as his. I was so shocked by what she had asked that I asked if she had asked others before asking me, and she said they were younger and might still have children in a year or two, so she didn't ask them. I just looked shocked, and she said, well, it's not like you're using it, is it? I looked at her, dumbfounded that she was asking me this. It gets worse. She made an appointment with her doctor the following day. It was like she was ordering me to go. I went home and told my fiancé, and he said we could hold off on our baby if you wanted to help your sister have her baby. It's not the fact that I don't want to help her, but there are other ways of doing surrogacy. You don't have to be a family member. I told him I wasn't happy about doing it, and that neither would my other sisters or 2XSL. So why was it different for her to expect I'd do it? My mom texted me, asking if I was okay because she got a weird text from my sister. The sister who wants me to be her surrogate stating that I had a cold heart because I didn't react the way she thought I would about being her surrogate. I explained to my mom that it just didn't sit with me to have the attitude demanding that I become her surrogate and that she has an appointment booked for the following day. My mom didn't tell me, but my dad did because he was livid about what the plan was. The appointment was to talk about donating my eggs to my sister, then putting them back inside me. So, in other words, I would be carrying my own child, but the father would be her new boyfriend. I got off the phone and looked at my fiancé, and I burst into tears. My parents knew he had heard everything because I had put them on speakerphone so he could listen. Literally two hours passed, and I had fallen asleep to be woken up by my fiancé, saying that my phone hasn't stopped ringing, he had been declining, if it were any of my family to give me a break and then me getting a text that he had to wake me up for because it said the following. The hospital appointment is at 1 p.m., we'll pick you up at 9 a.m., and you are to spend the day with us. You will do this. So I replied back, saying, do what? Just be your surrogate, or am I to donate my eggs to you and carry my biological child for you? Because that's what the baby will be if I donate my eggs to you, won't it? She replied back, saying the baby will be biologically mine. We have the same DNA. Be ready now. We'll pick you up, and you can stay at our house, so we know where you are. I knew she was going to say this, and with her living 30 minutes away from me, I rushed upstairs and grabbed stuff to stay somewhere. My fiancé called his parents, and they said I could stay with them until this died down. I've been at my future in-laws for a month. Basically, we all moved into theirs. He's the only child, and their house is huge and can fit us all. But it shouldn't be like this, hiding away from my sister, who clearly just wants my womb. She hasn't stopped texting, telling me that arsehole is ruining her life. But am I? I need to clarify. I did tell CS that I was not comfortable doing either of them what she wanted me to do, and she blew up. Update. Today my dad and my brothers with their wives are meeting me at my Phil's house. My other two sisters have decided to choose a side, and will be coming up with their husbands. This is to discuss, and I wanted to update you. My CS crazy sister and her possible mental state. My dad was talking to her new boyfriend, Will Shorten to NB. They have dated just under a year, and he's standing by CS, but doesn't agree that she wanted to use me as a surrogate, and to use my eggs as well. He thought they had discussed looking into egg donation, and that CS would be carrying the baby. He was told I was going to the appointment to support CS, and she told him that she and I were having a girly night. They moved in recently together after six months of dating, and CS went to stay with mom after the incident with me which no one knew until NB told my dad. Dad is separating from mom, unless she sees she was part of this situation, and is still siding with CS, which wasn't the right way to go about it, as she knew it was wrong. 
CS will be offered therapy again. And this will be paid for by dad. She will be told not to contact me until after she has completed her therapy. If she declines again, then my dad doesn't want anything to do with her and will seek legal action so she doesn't come near the family that doesn't want her in their presence anymore. If she takes the therapy treatment my dad is offering, it's on the grounds that she doesn't communicate with my sisters, and especially me regarding babies I am putting in this agreement that, until further notice, she is not to communicate with me about anything as I won't be texting her. She is also banned from attending my wedding in 18 months, regardless of whether she has treatment or not. She is not invited, and she is not welcome to celebrate a day of happiness with me and my fiancé. The reason why my other two sisters did radio silence is the fact that CS did actually ask them to be surrogates and said no. But that CS carried on texting them both while lying to me, saying she hadn't asked them. The only difference was that they had gone out for lunch with the three of them, and she sprang it on both of them together, so they had each other's backs. You probably think she asked my two sills. From what I know, she hasn't. But I don't think she would because she is not that close to our brothers. As me and my fiancé are always around one of my brothers. We all get together at least once a week, and our kids are close in age and go to the same schools, so they are close to them. Someone messaged me, asking where my kids were in this situation. They were with their dad, we have 50-50 custody. My children are teens. Their dad remarried a wonderful woman. I'm still friends with my ex and his wife, who I would say is a very close friend of mine now, as are my fiancé and ex, and we treat his wife's kids just like our own. We don't leave them out of things. And on some occasions, if my ex and wife want a date night, her kids will come to ours and have a sleepover with my children. My ex and his wife solely back me up. Even though my ex said, I always knew CS had a screw loose. My kids are teens and understand what has happened. So they decided to stay half the month with me at Phil's house and the following two weeks with their dad. I think the reason she came out of nowhere asking me and my sisters is the fact that my two sisters have had kids close together. One had her second two years ago and the other had hers 18 months ago. So me and my fiancé are thinking she wants what we have with my brothers, but with the sisters. I need to point out that we never exclude her from these get-togethers. The open invitation is for the siblings, but it is mainly me, my brothers, and our families that go to one another's house once a week. Phil's must think we're a crazy family. But in all fairness, I think they adopted my brothers and dad into the family the moment they met them. My f mill doesn't like the way my mom deals with things, and has on many occasions disagreed with my mom on her treatment towards me. But she felt that she couldn't tell me what to do, because that is not her place. Since being here for a month, my bond with my fills has strengthened. This is the last update so far. My fills know me and my fiancé are trying for a baby ourselves, and have said we should tell the family that is coming today that to so they know the reason why I said no. But it's only one out of a dozen reasons why I wouldn't be a surrogate. Not just for my sister, but for anyone. I think you need to have therapy before going down the road of becoming a surrogate for anyone. My dad also contacted the clinic to say that I am not consenting. He found a letter in the house when he was collecting more things from the house. I'll update you when I can. Thank you to everyone who commented on my last post. I need to clarify. I did tell CS that she was not comfortable doing either of them what she wanted me to do. And she blew up. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories. We've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friend.